The Quick Guide to Deception Analysis In order for you to actually detect deception properly, rather than to merely suspect and accuse, then make a note of the following. 1. False smiles. This is where the rest of the face is static apart from the lips. 2. No involvement of eyes. There is no crinkling around the eyes or eyebrow in any expression displayed. 3. More asymmetrical. This is where there is a certain asymmetry or unbalanced look between the right and left sides of the face because we just don't know how far to consciously move one side of the face to match the other. 4. Offset, not smooth. This is where the face just seems to hold too much tension. 5. Disguised smiling. This is where there was a brief expression which quickly changed to an inappropriate, out-of-context smile. 6. Lack of head movement. The subject keeps head unusually still as they process what to say. 7. Increased rate of fidgeting. The nervous tension comes out in the legs, feet, or movement of fingers and hands. 8. Increased pitch, elevated tonality, repeating the question. The voice goes up at the end and phrases such as You are asking me? or Why would I do that? as a plea to be believed rather than an answer to the question and giving themselves time to process. 9. Reduced rate of speech. This is to give themselves processing time and time to be careful with the structure of facts. 10. Pause fillers. These are noticeable utterances such as uh, uh, or lack thereof. Either the tale is rehearsed and so no eye movements indicative of processing, looking up and down and around the room occasionally, or there is an increase of pause fillers to give themselves time to construct. 11. Less congruent nonverbal behaviour. This is certain behaviour from the various communication channels, such as foot tapping or slapping hand on desk when they are not genuinely annoyed, for example. 12. Bad timing. Either expression on face after words are said, or sustained for too long, or actions do not keep time with words. Also, ask about a sequence of events backwards as most lies are only rehearsed forwards in time. So, what did you say you did before you telephoned the office? For example. Adapted from Zuckerman and Driver, 1984. Now, remember if you spot fear on the face of the person you are questioning, are these expressions of fear of being found out? or fear of just being put on the spot and analysed in this manner. A good questioner will be asking questions of various subjects to get a baseline to assess what a person's usual reaction to intense scrutiny is before judgment falls. Five things to do when being lied to. One. Listen to quantity and pitch. If they usually say a lot and are not, they could be lying. If they say loads and there's no need to, it could be an elaborate rehearsed story and they could be lying. If their pitch elevates at the end of a statement, they are asking for confirmation of what they have said, 
or it could, of course, be an inherent part of their accent. For example, I thought we'd go out tonight with elevated pitch at the end is really a question to see if you would like to. 2. Listen for distancing language. Are they talking emotively about real-time detail that they would only know if they were there and using I and me rather than you and you know what I mean? 3. Change the subject suddenly and look for relief from them. Someone recounting a true and interesting tale will continue to tell you about it even if you get up and start washing up.